the question was whether or not if an, an ID can become an ME or vice versa. I think, yeah, there's, there's already uh, evidence of that. Hey guys, John and Mike here from Hatch Duo. We're here today to just talk a little bit about whether industrial designers can become mechanical engineers and vice versa. When I was in school for industrial design, there were plenty of mechanical engineers who had come back to school after they've done mechanical engineering, either for like automotive industries or whatnot. And they're like, no, I really want to like sketch now. It's a pretty easy transition if you think about it because they've already like kind of worked together professionally. And case in point, you look at Mike, Mike has pretty good aesthetics if you look at some of the things he's engineered. So who's to say that that's not industrial design? Or, or if you look at our team, creating things for designing for assembly, you know, understanding snaps, understanding draft angles, um, yeah, we may not be able to do like mechatronics or anything like that, but uh, a basic level of like engineering understanding, I think that's key to become a good industrial designer as well. Especially here at Hatch 2, we kind of expect our team to eventually learn a little bit of, of both sides of that same coin. Yeah, as a matter of fact, I do know at least one person from my graduating class in engineering that did become, that did en end up studying industrial design um, as a second degree after graduating with a mechanical engineering degree. And secretly, if I knew that, if I knew about industrial design um, during my college, during my college years, I probably would have studied that as well. But now he just owns an industrial design firm, so even better. Even better. <laughs> I do think um, each respective profession and area has its expertise and should kind of stay as such. Like, I don't necessarily think like an industrial designer should think like a mechanical engineer all the way through the process. There's a time and a place for it. But to be able to understand how to work with a mechanical engineer and to be able to collaborate with him, that's the most important thing, right? So I don't necessarily expect every single designer on my team to be like full knowledge of every single manufacturing process or how to make that part move. But I do expect them to be able to work with someone on Mike's engineering team to figure it out together because ultimately like we cannot get to the finish line without doing it together right and so i think it's just really about having enough of that exposure to have the proper conversations to get a product to the finish line that's really what it's about yeah and i agree i think there's a time and a place for uh, healthy friction let's say for example when it comes to you know early development front end for industrial design you know we sort of let the creative process flow and what i mean by let the creative process flow is that we 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 try not to let mechanical engineering influence or impede on that development process and instead we we come in like towards the middle and towards the end and it actually it smooths out that transition process from the id to me handoff i think that's where you know we sort of let the industrial designers do their thing so the short the short answer to that would be uh, yes uh, mechanical engineering does have to step in because we sort of have to provide boundaries and guardrails for industrial design to skin within or, you know. A sandbox to plan. Yeah, a sandbox to plan. So sometimes it requires mechanical engineering uh, to define the sandbox for industrial design to play within. Otherwise, you know, you end up with something pretty radical. It's not a bad thing, right? But if we want to be quick and get through the development process quickly. There's things we need to do and constraints we need to apply. And to add to that, like conversely, sometimes there is a time when industrial design does have to push the processes, like known processes, in order to achieve innovation. And, you know, there, like, I, like I said, there's a time and a place to execute, you know, for a certain time to market. And there's, there's a time where we do have the luxury of having a bit more time to push the limits and the envelope a little bit. Case in point would be when we did the watch together, uh, Trying to make a watch out of concrete, you know, in hindsight, per very difficult problem to solve for. Engineering wise, not necessarily the most efficient, but branding wise and design wise, like high value in that, right? So how do you measure, how do you measure the trade-offs of like giving engineering a really, really hard time? And what's the trade-off value of that? If, if the upside is really good, then it may be worth it. Sometimes it, it's not worth it though, right? Sometimes it's like, if we're just trying to get rid of some fastener holes just for the sake of aesthetics, but it's gonna cause this thing to break apart, which, you know, we've run into those things before, it, it may not be feasible or, or advantageous to like push that hard. It's like something both of us have had to learn like over time, just working together ourselves individually too. Like there's a push and pull, like sometimes I will let Mike and his team lead, even though it's like, it, I cringe when I see a fastener or something like that. And other times I've seen him cringe when it's like, no, we're no, you need to make no parting lines. 
like all snaps, like no fasteners. And it's like, well, that's hard. It's gonna, it's been less robust. And I was like, we got to figure it out because it's for a consumer product, right? So there's times where we, you know, we have to challenge each other. And I think it just makes each team better, right? It makes each team a lot more advanced. And that's what makes our engineers probably like a little different than your typical mechanical engineer and our industrial designers, you know, a little bit better than the typical industrial designer who just renders something, right? Yeah, Rubbish is a good example of that, right? Because our mechanical engineers did make recommendations on adding a few visible fasteners, in which case we got a lot of pushback from the ID team, and then, which is fine, right? Because what we ended up doing was we, we designed a, in an enclosure with with very minimal uh, fasteners and on top of that we designed a second enclosure with with adequate number of fasteners and so we sort of tested both theories so sometimes it does take a little bit more effort to convince the industrial design team that you know fasteners sometimes are are, are necessary and you know there's instances where we have to make those trade-offs <music> I don't even find it difficult anymore, to be honest. Okay. Uh, I've, um, he enjoys you know, it now. working with, yeah, it is. It's a pleasure working with our industrial design team because, you know, we, we're, we're in such good rhythm and in sync that it's just easy to work with each other. Like we, we make trade-offs and compromises where we need to. And I think that goes both ways. Yeah. Yeah. I'd actually tend to agree. Like, I think we've gotten to this nice stride now where I can't imagine us being a design firm without a mechanical engineering team. I think it's ridiculous like uh, to have design done in a silo without any understanding of how things are going to get made or how parts are going to come together. They're not mutually exclusive things. Like I think industrial design and mechanical engineering, it's product design at the yeah. end of the day. And that's, that's what we are. We're, we're a product design firm. I think that's a tough one because I think a lot of times like a fresh grad there's rare instances where they're going to be the only industrial designer and then they suddenly have to work with the mechanical engineering team in that exceptional case yeah you're going to have to like really ramp up and understand manufacturing processes really quickly to me i think that's a, sometimes can be a disadvantage because you're fresh out of school you have really fresh ideas that's the, that's actually your superpower right like an older more experienced designer like me or like blake like we're we're jaded sometimes by you know, we know that this is exactly how you'd get it done and yada yada, right? And I think like coming fresh, like kind of the naivety of it actually is fun to work with. And so when you try to force them to understand the constraints a little too much, you kind of kill that creativity. So I would say like, if possible, try to get into a place where you have some senior designers to guide those crazy wild ideas and not get so caught up in like, I mean, that, that is exactly what the mechanical engineering team is for, to bring reality back into it. You don't have to worry so much about it. Like, let them do their job, and you do your job. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and, um, you know, share this video with your friends. Yeah. Um. <laughs> the most challenging part. John. <laughs> One word. We'd like to hear from you, and... Uh, <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> no, just, you have to chop it up, but uh, we'd like to hear from you, so comment down below. Yep.